In this video, we're going to apply the impulse momentum theorem to some physical situation. Okay, so here's the problem. Uh, a ball is dropped from a height of 10 meters, and then after it hits the ground, it bounces back to a height of 2.5 meters. And uh, it's given that the ball's in contact with the ground for 0.12 seconds, and we have to figure out the uh, force, average force exerted by the ball on the ground, by on the ball by the ground. So, just a quick picture of what's going on. And you have the ground, you have the ball, the ball goes down, and it's dropped. So it goes down, makes contact, So the and then after it makes contact with the ground, it goes up. Okay, so the ball is dropped from a height of 10 meters, and it rises to a height of 2.5 meters and we need to figure out the average force so in order to do this problem the first thing we need to do is come up with a tactic okay so at this point you know just pause and ask yourself what can you use what about the impulse momentum theorem can you use in order to figure this out okay all right so assume that you know let's assume that you've gone through the process and now you have an idea now what we're going to do is we're going to first find the impulse delivered to the ball and in order to do that, uh, we will first have to find the speed with which the ball hits the ground. So we're going to first find the speed with which it hits the ground. And then we find the speed with which the ball takes off from the ground. So first we find the speed with which it hits the ground. Okay, we'll call it V1. And we'll find the speed with which it takes off from the ground. And once we know this, then uh, we can figure out the impulse. And then from the time, we can figure out the force. All right, now, um, just realize that the mass is not good. Let the mass of the ball be equal to 100 grams. Okay, so let's first, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna first, we're gonna first calculate the impulse using PF minus PI because if we know the speeds, we know the momentum on uh, for the the momentum with which it strikes the ground and then the momentum with which it takes off. Alright? So let's first find the speed with which it hits the ground. For that we're going to use our 1D motion, which is Vf square equals Vi square plus two way delta x. Now in this case, on the way down, the initial velocity of the ball is zero. And it is the final velocity that we're looking for. So 0 square plus 2 times negative 9.8 times, uh, what's the height? It was minus 10. All right, so which is 196. So this gives me Vf is equal to plus or minus square root of 196, which happens to be plus or minus 14 meters per second. Now it's very important that when you use this equation, you notice that you get two answers, a positive and a negative. And you have to choose now. Now, which one are you going to choose? Where is the ball going? Is it going up? Is it going down? And in this case, clearly the ball is going down. So we'll choose the negative value. So negative 14 meters per second. And, uh, and because it is going down. Also, what we're going to do is we're going to call this guy simply V1. So V1 is negative 14 meters per second. All right. Now, Let's calculate the speed with which it takes off to reach a height of 2.5 meters. Which means at the 2.5 meter mark, its velocity is zero. So once again, you'll do, we'll use Vf square equals Vi square plus 2a delta x. Vf now is zero, and Vi is what we're finding. So there's 2 times negative 9.8 times 2.5. And this gives us Vi square is equal to 49 and vi is equal to plus or minus square root 49 plus or minus 7 meters per second. Once again, we have to ask, what sign do we choose? And since the ball is going up, our vi is going to be plus 7 meters per second, and we're just going to call it uh, v2. So now we have all the information for the collision. We know the speed with which it goes down, and then we also know the speed with which it takes off. Okay, so it's going to come down with a speed of 14 meters per second, 
uh, and it's going to take off with a speed of 7 meters per second. So now we are ready to calculate the impulse which is equal to the mass which is 0.1 do not forget to convert everything to the right units times V2 minus 0.1 times V1 V2 happens to be 7 and V1 happens to be negative 14 and if you do this all correctly you'll get 21 times 0.1 which happens to be 2.1 Newton seconds for the impulse now now we know the impulse the impulse momentum theorem said us that this oops 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 there's no arrow on the time is equal to pf minus pi we calculated that on the right side we have force uh, is that we're looking for force and we can just leave it in terms of magnitude right now so magnitude of the force times the time and the time was 0 0.12 and this was equal to 2.1 so this gives us force equals 2.1 divided by 0 0.12 and this ends up being uh, so this is equal to 17.5 newtons all right so again in this problem you've been given the height with which you drop something and then the height that it reaches now you use all that information to figure out the speeds by using one dimensional motion equations once you get the speed with which you hit the ground and the speed with which you take off you can calculate the momentum or rather the impulse by using pf minus pi and then once you know that you can calculate the force all right so that's it for this problem